Greetings and welcome to Let's Play Kitty Power 5. Ah, what's that? Ah, oh, my uh, cell phone. Um, how do I get from my main topic now? Uh, MMOs, okay. <laughs> I kind of wanted to talk about my MMO experience, sort of, and why I play MMOs and why. In my opinion, so many MMOs crash and burn in hell. <laughs> Mostly all of those that came out after World of Warcraft. And what... I'm not a developer and I'm not a publisher, but... Perhaps some... I don't know... Points... That... I personally think quite a lot of MMOs nowadays are lacking. That actually, well, grab people that attract people and that make people actually carry on playing the game the games like a scene would say <laughs> um my mo experience i started off around when i was 15 something like that everquest the first everquest expansion uh, ruins of kurnak just came out and I got it because a friend of mine who I was playing Diablo 1 with was buying it and I was like, okay, I'll check it out and play with her. But yeah, and uh, it kind of stuck me. It was interesting. One of the main things that bothered me, I started off as a dwarf warrior named Orgrim Doomhammer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was a huge Warcraft fan even back then. <laughs> um, so I started off as an, a dwarf. And being a warrior at EverQuest wasn't that easy, because uh, I killed crocolisks in Oasis of Ma for quite some time, and it was really like this. You kill a crocolisk as a warrior, and then you could sit down for two hours until your health regen <laughs> regenerated back. I had no idea back then. I did buy some bandages, but... I didn't have a lot of money, so I was poor, I didn't have, I had no experience, I had no pre-MMO experience. And even back then, I was kinda on the uh, introvert side. And my friend, she first started off as a rogue, and then later on switched to a pre uh, yeah, cleric. And she, she kinda, she was more of the extrovert kind, so she met a lot of people and she... I wouldn't say she abandoned me, but we weren't really playing a lot together, but we were chatting quite a lot. So I was like, okay, the warrior isn't really turning out. Let's check the forums, check a little bit around, and voila. Necromancers are supposed to be a pretty cool class, an easy class, or oh, easy in quotation marks, class to solo with. And I was like, okay, that kind of sounds like my class. So I was putting out or creating Muxine Siren Leaf, the Dark Elf Necromancer, and I carried on playing the game. I, I soloed a little bit and it was really it, it was a long grind. You really had to grind back in EverQuest. You, you were sitting down in Orc Highway and churning out killing monsters left and right and it, it was it was crazy it was crazy um after that i sometimes met a few people i met off with a i met a druid there when we solo together <laughs> duo uh, can't really solo together but we do it quite a lot and double dotting and stuff like that it was pretty interesting and so i came to my first guild switched guilds because of uh, stuff and so on and yeah so that was my first MMO experience ever quest there wasn't that much theory crafting going on back then I read a lot into the necromancer class and how people complained that Ooh, we are just used as mana batteries and it is so much better to, to dot so the, the mob dies faster and blah 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 and yeah. <laughs> um another friend of mine who was playing a cleric or a met there and we always was joking around how I was pumping her full of mana and <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't mind that. <laughs> Anyways, um 
So I didn't really mind my role as a necromancer. I did do some dots, I did do some pumping, mana pumping, the clerics and healers and so on. I was pretty good at soloing. I when I was grinding on Shadows of Lucklin, I kind of I nearly perfected the the multi-target killing and stuff like that. I had one enemy rooted one I was kiting one, the other one was feared and I was killing like three, four enemies at the same time. And I chatted with another friend of mine and I told him, well, I, about in one hour I make so and so much experience. And he's like, whoa, that, that is pretty good. He, he doesn't, he does about get as much as in a uh, old Sibyllis group when it was still hot. So, I don't know, he was... He was grinding an old Sibyllis for XP and it was still Lucklin. Oh well, it was EverQuest, you didn't even get 10 levels more after each expansion. Anyways, um, so I got kind of like bored with EverQuest, I stopped playing. Yeah, I think the World of Warcraft beta came out and that was the first time I quit, or was it before? At least I, I quit EverQuest to play World of Warcraft. Mostly, I was a huge World of War, uh, Warcraft fan, as I mentioned. I played Warcraft 1, I played Warcraft 2, I was... I played Warcraft 3, of course, and I was really pumped for World of Warcraft. And World of Warcraft came out, and I have to say, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people may disagree with me or will complain or blah blah blah. The main selling point for World of Warcraft was that it was more polished than all of the MMOs, uh, all of the rivaling MMOs that were out already at the same time. It was more polished than EverQuest. It was, of course there were bugs, don't get me wrong, World of Warcraft did not come out bug free, I can't say that. There were a lot of server downs, there were a lot of long queues, and so on. But it played a lot easier, not uh, more smoothly, not necessarily easier when it, World of Warcraft came out. It was more smoothly. You had something to do, even as a melee class. And in EverQuest, if you were playing a warrior at that time, the only thing you could do was hitting the taunt button, hitting the kick or bash button, depending on your race. And that's kind of it. And then you were just standing there and clicking on through multiple mobs. In World of Warcraft, you didn't have that. In World of Warcraft, you had already uh, charges and heroic strikes, and every few levels you got new skills, and so you had something to do while playing. In I'm I'm pretty glad I didn't play a warrior in EverQuest. I tried a lot of classes. I tried out a paladin, I tried out a bard. I have to say I really liked the idea of a bard. And I kinda hope that they introduce something like that in World of Warcraft sooner or later. But as soon as they have to introduce that, they kinda have to brainwash every player that ever played World of Warcraft. And because people are too focused now on damage, healing output, and you can't just put in a class that instead of dishing out the same DPS than someone else, he increases the DPS and HPS output of every member by 20% or something. So in the end, with a bard, the group is more powerful than just with another warrior. But people will be like, oh, the bot didn't do any damage. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the problem there. <laughs> we didn't have that in EverQuest. There were no add-ons or something. The, our guild leader had something that read out log files, kind of, kind of like recount. So he could he could check when a cleric was fucking up the chain heal rotation, a complete heal rotation, not chain heal, the complete heal rotation and so on. It was quite fun. Anyway, so I played World of Warcraft and I have to say, like I said, World of Warcraft was more polished than other MMOs, at least more, more polished than EverQuest. In EverQuest, when a patch came out, you couldn't play for at least two weeks because the game was bugged out as hell. They changed something on the rangers and suddenly the necromancers were only doing half as much damage. Woo! 
fun times. Um, so I kind of stuck with World of Warcraft, mostly because I was playing with my best friend at the time, together, and she, and, oh, well, not she, but we kind of gathered some more friends. I was pretty active in a forum, a trading card game forum that starts with Y and ends with G-O. And we met a, quite a lot of people there, and they also started playing World of Warcraft with us. So we had kind of full party there. And we were playing a lot together, so it was fun, it was fun. Um, and yes, about <laughs> seven years later, I'm still playing World of Warcraft, with a lot of breaks in between. I did check out Lord of the Wings online. A very nice game. I really enjoyed the time in there. I was playing it with my other best male friend at the time, whom I <laughs> luckily met through World of Warcraft. Um, so I was playing about a month or so, Lens of, uh, not Lens of Floor, Lord of the Rings online. I did check out in between EverQuest 2 with another friend and our guild around the time Uldu, Uldua came out, not Uldu, Uldua came out. Uh, it was in the middle of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. Me and five, six other people tried out Warhammer. And, whoa, this game was bad. <laughs> I have no idea how somebody can enjoy playing that game. Well, considering there's about, I think, one server left, or two servers left, I can understand that a lot of people share that opinion. And... Yeah, so I wasn't really that thrilled of more MMOs. I did check out EverQuest again. I made a video about that <laughs> when it came out. And I was... Pfft, since it's free to play, I kind of... I tried, tried it out a few more times. It's interesting. It's really interesting. But the game is so bloated. And there is n virtually no in-game help. This is something I will address later on. Um... They did add a lot of things that make the game easier, and you level a lot faster. I was killing a few giants in uh, the Great Divide with my rain, halfling ranger, and she was getting levels like left and right. Like, you kill five giants and voila, you got a level. Before that, you were killing 50 giants in order to get a level. By the world. Um, so, I may say that I have some MMO experience. I, like I said in the beginning, I'm not a game developer and I'm not a publisher. But there are a lot of things I may say that may interest me and what I personally see, but quite a lot of... Oh yes, and I did play Star Wars The Old Republic. The game was so bad, I totally forgot about it. <laughs> it's only of a year, and not even a year. Um, so why a lot... The main reason why I'm doing this vlog is I read uh, one week ago something that the Terra servers are merging. They are Cutting down from, I think, 6 PvE server, 4 PvP server, and 1 roleplay server um, together to 1 server each. So 1 PvP, 1 PvE, and 1 RP server, even though I'm pretty sure the RP server is pretty much dead. <laughs> and so I was like, there are a lot of discussion going on about the MMO market, about, oh, the free-to-play model is kind of like the, the, the solution to everything. <laughs> I didn't really want to say final solution there. Um, <laughs> that would be highly inappropriate. And so, yeah, a lot of MMOs are bunking, reasons unknown to most people. And I kind of, I find it funny that Publishers and game developers, I'm not sure if they spend money in researching why these games failed or actually asking people what they want to see 
I can tell you that they didn't want to see five hour long cutscenes in front of every freaking quest. We saw that with Star Wars The Old Republic. And I can tell you that they do not want buggy uh, horse shit that kills every high end PC, kinda like we saw with Warhammer, because that game was nearly unplayable. I never played such a laggy game before, and I didn't have a bad PC at the time. It was playing Warcraft pretty well. And we had some people in the guild that had even better PCs that had really much a lot of problems. My best friend was getting stuck everywhere. He was jumping up over a, uh, a box or something, and he got stuck on the box. I jumped over the box, and it worked fine. So there was some problem there. I don't know what problem, but yeah. And that really pisses you off if you have to um, relog every five minutes. Not to mention, I did mention the my Warhammer fiasco. I, I think I mentioned it. I was playing a uh, witch... Is it a witch or something? The Night Elf Rogue class or Dark Elf Rogue class. I was playing witches with my best friend, and we were leveling all of Friday. I was still studying, so I had a lot of free time, and I was playing like 8 to 10 hours. I was I was churning out levels left and right. And we were, like I said, playing together. No problem there. And suddenly the server crashed. And we were like, yeah, okay, doesn't really matter. And logged on the next day, Saturday morning. We were still pumped. It, the game was okay to play. It was something new, let's say this. But then, yeah, then we logged in and my levels were gone. All the levels I gathered from the last day were gone. Every experience, every item, everything gone. But I was still at the same place that I logged off. Oh, well, the server crashed. So I made a ticket. I wrote a ticket. I wrote, guys, <laughs> what the fuck? Well, when I'm writing tickets to Game Master, I'm always nice because these are still just people, even though they are. I'm kind of paying them to do the job. But I'm still doing. I'm still nice. I mean, I'm explaining the situation as best as possible. Hello, I was uh, playing yesterday for eight hours. From blah to blah. Then the server crashed. I couldn't log on anymore. Nobody in my guild could log on anymore, and the next morning I logged in and my whole progression of the last day was gone. Can you please fix that? So I logged on to another character and yeah, waited for the GM to answer. I still had the notification, you have an open ticket. So I was playing another character, I was again playing for 8-10 hours or something like that. And then I locked off, and about half an hour or one hour later, I got a mail. Oh, we are so sorry, we couldn't reach you in-game, and about your problem, we can't help you there. Bye! And I was like, okay, if you can't make backup copies of my character every, at least every half an hour, or at least every hour, no, this is absolutely no-go. You try this in World of Warcraft, you try a character rollback of 10 minutes and people will fucking kill you. <laughs> I, can tell, I can guarantee you that. If somebody loots an item he was looking forward for a long time and suddenly the item is gone because you had a rollback, a minor rollback, they will freaking murder you. <laughs> so okay, that was my Warhammer experience. And I can say this game was really bad. Even though I was playing it for 10 hours. It was fun because I was playing it with other people, but playing it alone, no, no, Ugh. let that be there. Anyways, <clears throat> so a lot of MMOs nowadays kind of bite the dust for whatever reasons. And I think the main reason is part is divided in two halves. There are two main big points, in my opinion. That kind of kills new MMOs. The first one, of course, is the gameplay. A lot of people say, oh, we do not want another World of Warcraft clone. 
And now I have to ask, what exactly is a World of Warcraft cl clone? Sorry. I mean, it is a theme park MMO genre. It is a theme park MMO. You, if you play a new game, you will most likely have that. The other thing you may have is a sandbox MMO. You may say that ever. Uh, I wouldn't say EverQuest was a sandbox MMO, it was something in between or something. Kind of like a theme park and sandbox, because you had lots and lots of things to do, but still a huge world to explore. Um, EVE Online is a sandbox MMO. Players are contributing to the game, they are making um, the universe, they are running corporations and stuff like that. I haven't played EVE Online myself. It didn't really catch me. I'm really not a fan of player versus player environments and games. So I was like, okay, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. But yeah, this is one of the few games that seem to be doing pretty well. It is doing pretty well. So it's of course isn't on World of Warcraft levels, but compared to the other MMOs, it seems to hold his um, community. So the, I think the main problem with a sandbox MMO is just imagine a sandbox MMO that actually gets as popular as World of Warcraft. They there is so many implications, so much stuff you have to consider that doesn't really work in a sandbox MMO with a lot of people. Space being one of the main things. <laughs> in Star Wars Galaxies, um, another game I didn't play, but I heard a lot of stuff about it. It seems to be, a, it sounded like a pretty good game, just horribly, horribly bugged. And you could create your own cities, you could make your own, uh, you could make a, your own house and people could visit the house and you could. Put in stuff there, that all sounds fine on paper, that all sounds fine for a game that that has like 2,000 people per server maximum or something like that. But if you go into the wages of like 10,000 people per server, uh, yeah, you will have a pretty hard time because <laughs> just imagine everyone having a house in Westfall or Elvin Forest in World of Warcraft. Of course, the game world has to be bigger for that. Perhaps it may work out, I don't know. It's not my thing. I'm not really into sandbox MMOs. Pfft, simple as that. Um, so what can people do? This is just like my opinion. It's not so much set in stone and I kind of want to start off a um, discussion here. One second. Um, one thing. I am starting with the community part, where I personally see a lot of problems in newer games. And even in World of Warcraft. And I want to make one thing clear. I do not see World of Warcraft as the best game ever created. It's the same as McDonald's isn't the most popular or the best odd cuisine out there because a lot of people are eating it. No, it's a lot of people are eating it because it's fast, it's, uh, it does the job, it, it gets the job done <laughs> for what it's, what you put in. You, you put down five euro and you get five cheeseburger and these cheeseburgers make you happy for half a day or something and everything is fine. So, I'm not saying that World of Warcraft is the pinnacle of MMOs and no game will ever be better or something. But one thing games have to keep in mind is that they have to grow. World of Warcraft had time to grow. It had the great advantage that it was already, in my opinion, like I said, more polished than the other MMOs that came out. It didn't necessarily have more content. When World of Warcraft came out, it was Molten Core out on release? I'm not sure, I think so. And even then it came out pretty shortly, but 
it had one weight instance or Nuxia's lair was added later into the game. And so comparing it to EverQuest that had like five billion weight monsters <laughs> when uh, when World of Warcraft came out and offered a lot more content, but still World of Warcraft was more fun, in my opinion. And that's why I stick to it. One second. Mm. <clears throat> so but that is more about gameplay. One thing the community has to stop. If you like a new MMO, do not declare it as the next World of Warcraft killer. Simple as that. Why, you may ask. First of all, no game will kill World of Warcraft. The same way World of Warcraft did not kill EverQuest. EverQuest is just releasing its 90th 19th expansion and EverQuest 2 is releasing its 9th expansion so these games are not dead. Sure, they switched from pay to play to free to play models but they are still running good. EverQuest uh, makes more numbers now or higher numbers than before, before uh, when it was still pay to play. Now it's when it's free to play it's getting more revenue which is a good thing. <laughs> Free to play does not necessarily mean that the MMO is bad. Doesn't. No, it's still it's just a different form of currency. And that's one thing people have to stop is all people also have to stop is declaring that every free to play MMO is crap. If it's done right, then it's okay. MMOs I read about this on an article about there is one browser game. It's not O game, but it's similar to O game. About a, a browser game where you could buy, where you have some sort of galaxy network and you are building ships or something like that. Like I said, it's not O game. I do pl did play O game, <laughs> um, and I think it was this game. And they were releasing some sort of drone. Uh, level 10 drone and you could get this drone in game it just takes like five years to gather all the necessary materials and you have to get all the drones beforehand and they were releasing this level 10 drone that gave you I'm not sure how good of an advantage it was but there were advantages of course and they were selling each drone for one thousand dollar they put down here, we have 1,000 drones to sell, each drone $1,000. So, I uh, think one week later, every single drone was sold. Yep, they kind of made more money with that deal than I paid so far in seven years of World of Warcraft for this freaking game. Um, and that's the thing with free-to-play games. Free-to-play games have three sorts of customers. I read about that. Um, minnows, people, kind of like people like me. Pe when I check out a free-to-play game, I did, I do play a little bit, and depending on how the shop is set up, I may reconsider carrying on. Kind of like in EverQuest, you can buy some bony in the shop that also help you in the game, but. It is not pay to win, as far as I know. I haven't really checked the shop. You can buy some mounts, some vanity items, wings, or whatever. And you can also get some double experience potions or something like that. But it's not that necessary. You can still have a pretty okay-ish level flow, at least from what I played. My characters are plates of power level. Um, so that's okay. But that's a minnows. Minnows are people who kind of check out your game. You get almost no revenue out of them. They may, may buy like one or two items if they really like the game and it helps them. But they spend like five bucks maximum at all in your shop. <laughs> so that's not a lot of revenue you get from there. Then there are dolphins. Dolphins are people who regularly buy at your shop, who enjoy the game. So you may get about twenty euro per month from them, kind of like if they have a if they had a subscription, 
So they are buying um, more storage space, faster riding, stuff like that. And then there are the whales, and the whales are the one, are the kind of customers you want to attract and you want to keep happy. Whales are the ones who, like I said, put down 1,000 euro to buy items from your freaking shop. And these items better be worth it. They want advantages in the game. Money is absolutely no discussion for them. They they have enough, they can't want to play this game, they want to win, they want to be the best. Let them have it. Kind of like in the first, I think, <laughs> there were some people were actually buying items in the Diablo 3 auction house for $250 or euro, I don't even know. Which is batshit insane. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, really? But well, some people have the money and that's the people you want to attract. But one thing you have to keep in mind is you kind of have to set up your game that way. You can't just... And I'm pretty sure it won't... It will not help Star Wars The Old Republic to switch to the free-to-play model because the game has to offer something. <laughs> that's kind of what it's lacking. That's, that's the thing. Anyway, so, yeah. Back to my points. Okay, the first stop declaring everything as a World of Warcraft killer. No game will kill World of Warcraft. And the problem with this is that you attract the, what I call, MMO locusts. These are people who go to a new game and they are like, Oh, sales are high. We sold 2 million units. Best game ever. Best sale ever. And two months later, uh, nobody is left on the servers because everyone left because they were like okay this is not like world of warcraft i kind of hate this game and i'm off and then they leave like 20 negative comments in the forum and piss off other people and the forum turn into no ground for any kind of discussion about the game and yeah that's it that are the mmo locusts or trolls or whatever and i blame a lot of this a lot of the recent failures to these people, sort of. Uh, if you, I kind of like reading game forums. I kind of want to keep interested in the game and so on. So I read the forums, and if every every thread is something negative about the game, it kind of affects even me. I, it's not like I oh I like I love this game and suddenly I hate it no but it's if I'm not really that decided yet and people are like oh the end game is crap and it blows there's nothing to do I reached level max level in two days because leveling is so fast and I have no other hobbies or it was a weekend or whatever and no I have nothing to do anymore and I'm like okay I'm leveling and. I already got told that there's nothing at the end game. That kind of puts a damper on my enthusiasm to level. Um, so yeah, but it's another point. But I really wish publisher and game developers would do more monitor your forms. I know these are paying customers. I know they they have the right to express their voice and it's okay as long as they do it in a normal way. It's okay if somebody says, hey, I'm unhappy with this and that. It would be nice if they could introduce that and so on and so forth. But if some people are just throwing out vile accusations and hatred and everyone who likes this game is stupid and everyone who doesn't like this game is stupid and just ban these people from the forum just first first give them a temporary ban and if they can't behave just delete their access to the forum if they go overboard just kick them you do not need these people these people will not help you gather more customers and it makes a lot of people unhappy it, the 
people who get unhappy may stick longer if the forum would actually be a place where you can discuss the game. There was no dis almost no discussion going on in the Star Wars The Old Republic forum. The first weeks, months, only, the game sucks, I hate this game, blah blah blah. There was no discussion what tank is better in that situation, how should I skill and so on and so barely. Barely. There were some posts, of course, but nothing to write home about. And that's really a problem. And so, sure, not a lot of people, uh, not the, the majority of people do not read the forums. But it is kind of like this in game, too. If I don't know, I don't know why they keep on these flaming turds and just didn't, don't monitor them. Which is another thing <clears throat> on the community part help newcomers and build up a community in-game. Uh, something I thought about, I was talking about this topic earlier with Star's Helmet, and something came to mind is, like, offer people some sort of um, supporter role or something, kind of like a mini game master without the... But just for helping newcomers. They can even be locked on with their main character. Like, they, they run around, uh, they're questing, and they are somehow marked as a newbie guide, let's call it this. And people can interact with them in a certain way, like a s certain chat system, like, hey, I have a question, and like, okay, I've opened up a channel, and then they can help the newbie and at the end the, new, the newcomer or the people or the person who asked the question can wait this person who helped him and they get points for that and if they get points have enough points they can get buy some vanity items nothing game breaking no 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 if it's game breaking it will be exploited people will make 20 accounts and push them every day <laughs> with upvotes no 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 pets uh, some special closing options, some, I don't know, if you create a new character or if you have a hairdresser in the game, some new hair option, something like, I help people and I get something in return. Or give them some sort of special, like, let them moderate the channels a little bit. It's not like they have the power to... Um, to mute people, but they can have an ease and access to a game master. Like, oh hey, game master, blah blah blah. Uh, this guy is uh, fucking up the channel in this and that area. Well, how about you check it out and mute this guy? Something like that. Something that makes the in-game a lot more comfortable to be. I in world of it's even bad in World of Warcraft. If you ask a question in trade chat in World of Warcraft, people jump on you. Oh, you noob, you fucking noob, how dare you? If you enter a wait instance in World of Warcraft nowadays and you aren't... Well, nowadays it's not that bad because they changed the talent system. But before that, oh, you are not the perfect... Spe for this and that, that you suck and I hate you and you didn't put in the right gems for your class. Of course, a uh, hunter with spirit gems is something to be laughed at, but um, even that, just if people would actually help each other a lot more, it'd make MMO communities a lot friendlier, then yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, MMO will strive if it has a uh, or if it has the reputation of having a really good community. That's something I'm looking for in a game. Uh, I would be looking for in a game. If I if I go out and I hear, oh, the community in Lands of Law is so... Uh, not Lands of Law. Oh, Lord of the Wings is so helpful. And if you play the game, it actually... People are helping. It doesn't have to be like, oh, they give you money and items and stuff. No, just explain the game to me. That's one big thing that bothers me with EverQuest 2. You have 320 alternate experience points in this game. You can put them on five different talent trees. I'm sitting in front of that and I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what may... Does it render my char useless? Can I change it later? Well, I, I did read about that. But when I first... 
Or uh, I can't even. I'm not putting myself on as the average player. The average player are people who just know how to play a game. They may know how to use Google since they are gamers or something like that. But I'm pretty sure that the majority of people who play um, MMOs are not that much into COV crafting. And we had that with a good friend of mine, also met him in World of Warcraft. He was a friend of someone or something, and he joined our guild. He had no idea about World of Warcraft. He heard about that, and he was like, hey, I'm here, war. And we were like, oh, hey. Well. And he was like, yeah, well, what kind of class is good? That's the first major question. <laughs> what kind of class is good? Most people don't know that. Which is okay. I mean, when I play Rift, I, I did play Rift, for example, the first few levels. And the game throws, you can choose between three different classes. Or you have a main class and then a secondary class. And you can switch out the classes. And it's, in my opinion, overly complicated. And if you start the game, you don't know, can I... Solo efficiently as a cleric, am I bound to groups? I kinda like to heal. Can a shaman heal? Can this combination heal well? What kind of healing and so on? And oh, I kinda like to tank. Do I have to be a guardian in order to tank? Stuff like that. that that's something that I had a problem with in World of Warcraft when I was playing my. Paladin. I was leveling up a Paladin classic, my first character. She was leveling in Holy. It kind of worked out. It kind of worked out. Uh, it was not fast. It wasn't slow either. I had a good pacing going on. I could kill five mobs or so at the same time with my shields and stuff like that. So it was okay. It just took a long time to take them down. But I was nearly invincible, so nothing could kill me. Anyways, <clears throat> um, so yeah, we we told him, well, what do you want to do? Ah, I'm kind of like the spellcaster type. Okay, you have the option of a priest, a shadow priest, but yeah, it, it wasn't that good at the time. One thing you may be interested in, a warlock is a pretty good soloing class because he has a pet. If things go wrong, he has something to back up. And so and it was like, oh, okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Here he played a warlock. Then... Moving on, we explained him, okay, um, you as a warlock, you should focus on stamina and intellect. You kind of need a little bit of spirit, but for leveling purposes, just keep on intellect and um, stamina. That's kind of, for leveling purposes, wonderful. Then he moved on and he was like, hey, I'm level 10 now and there's this thing down. Oh yes, that's the PvP stuff. So if you click on that, you can join a PvP Q and U and so on and so forth. We explained the whole game step by step to him. We explained him the currency system. Later on, when you when you're max level in World of Warcraft, you can do heroic dungeons to gain some sort of currency. And with this currency, you can buy items. If you do weights, you get another currency. You can buy different items. If you do this reputation quest, you get a currency to buy items. If you do this and so on. If you do PvP, you get a currency and so on and so forth. And we explained this to him so slowly but steady. And he was like, okay, well, that's... I would have been so lost without you guys. That's what he once said. If I had played the game on my own and started on my own, I highly doubt I would have carried on playing it. Because this is pretty much pretty complicated if you are not into the game. For us it was okay. It was a slow development. It, I'm pretty sure if somebody carried on playing EverQuest for all these years, he's like, well, what, what, what are you talking about all these changes? I mean, hello, it's... It's natural. It, of course, you have to go to this guy to get to the plane of whatever. And just, didn't you read the manual or <laughs> something like that? And when I was playing, I think I started with House of Tool again, and everything was different. Everything. There were you could make spells out of recipe books or something. Uh, not recipe books, but. There was another way to make spells, and I don't know how. And there was this 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 monster guy in this 
uh, in the corner that teleported me to some maze. I could do some. I could get turned into a monster if I wanted to and do some scenarios, or I can get a uh, a mercenary who helps me with leveling and so on. And there was so much new, and I had no idea what to do. That's the main problem. But that's not really a problem with newer games, that's only a problem with older games, but even with newer games, just like have some guides and give the guide some vanity items, pets, and so on. Something nice, something like, hey, it's nice that you as a player help us make the game better. And you, of course, have to monitor these guides, so it's not like somebody tells every newbie player, oh, you're a warrior, you really need intelligence, because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, moderated form is better. <clears throat> Another thing that a lot of people don't understand, a lot of people are playing World of Warcraft. A lot of people, including me, played World of Warcraft for a long time. And... I do have to leave seven years of stuff back when I'm starting a new game. And I'm not asking to start off a new MMO and have about the same, like, oh yeah, you leveled seven characters in World of Warcraft to max level here, choose between seven characters. But it would be nice, especially if a lot, uh, usually people nowadays, at, at least I think so, because I'm doing it. People do not leave alone an MMO and start alone a new MMO. They are usually in a group of people together. So in World of Warcraft you have the recruit a friend thing that gives people, like one person uh, starts a normal account and then recruits a friend and they get a bonus to experience when they're leveling together, they get a mount they can use together, and so on. So that's something that's actually kind of like, if I switch an MMO, or, uh, and I already have an established group of people, and we all switch to the new MMO, it would be nice to have some sort of bonus. It doesn't have to be experience. The main reason why World of Warcraft has this experience thing is because it does take a... Um, if you're new to the game, it does take a long time to level up because you're not familiar with the whole game. So a XP bonus is nice. And for every level, there's both level. I think every two levels you level, you can give one level to another character on the person who uh, made the recruited the friend. Well, it's kind of silly. But still, so yeah. That's how World of Warcraft solves it, and it would be nice if other MMOs would solve it in a similar way. Like, I can recruit friends and I get bony in game. Again, it doesn't have to be game breaking things. Same with the help with the newbie guide thing, just make it vanity items. If you have um, a housing system, give them some housing options or so even stuff you can acquire yourself in game so people aren't like eh, do I have to recruit a friend now to have this awesome thing no but it makes things easier something like that nothing too big but a nice nudge in the right direction and one thing also what in my opinion killed Star Wars The Old Republic was the group finding a lot of people Really, a lot of people complained on the uh, forum about the lack of a group finder. I know a lot of people are used uh, aren't used to that, and in other MMOs it is not that uh, common. But in World of Warcraft, and I'm not sure. I think Rift introduced it. I'm not sure. But in World of Warcraft, you have the luck for group finder, and it looks for people in your server cluster, I think nowadays on every server and puts them in a group. But I I can already hear people typing like mad. I hate that. Give people the option to just look for people on their own server. Perhaps even a slider. Like I want to have at least one, two, three, four, five, whatever, how big the group is, people of my server in the group. 
make it a little note notification of course it takes longer to find people from your server and so on and so forth uh, make it easier for people to find groups even I'm looking for group channel that's already in the game Star Wars The Old Republic didn't have a server wide looking for group channel people had to make them themselves and it really turned out into a huge clusterfuck because then somebody got the moderator options because the creator of the channel went offline and it just blocked the channel or they put in a password or something like that because people are assholes we already know that and if I would be a GM I would find out who that was and just ban him because that is inappropriate and assholeish behavior he won this one person just reduce the gaming experience of god knows how many people who couldn't access this fucking grouping looking for group channel especially in a game like star wars it was bad because everyone was scattered about different planets and you didn't have one local channel to look for people sure it was easy but people kind of that's what i kind of like about the looking for group tool in World of Warcraft because I can just start looking for a group if I'm a tank I get instant invites if I'm a healer I have like five minutes of wait time ten minutes depending and so and it's a damage dealer there 15 minutes upwards and so on but I'm leveling a priest at the moment in World of Warcraft and it makes it so much easier because if I wouldn't do that I would have to travel around or join a channel and I'm looking for more people for the new scholar mans because I'm about level 40 now and that's the, what the level is now I'm looking for more people for scholar mans and then I'm sitting down on my ass looking for people I have to do it manually then I get some people and it takes longer and then one leaves and so I don't have, I don't need that anymore. That's the main reason why I did not play a warrior in EverQuest, because I didn't want to look manually for a freaking group. But it is so much easier if you just, like I said, give them an option. If you want to meet people on your server, that's totally fine. That's, that's one thing I'm really missing in World of Warcraft at the moment the server community. Nobody knows each other anymore. Before it in Classic, people knew each other. The people knew, oh yeah, we joy, that's the that was the main guild on my server. Oh yeah, I know this and that guy and hell <laughs> even I was uh semi decently known on the server because I was the weight leader of uh, I think we were server fifth or something like that. So we were people knew each other. That that kinda that kinda got removed now with the whole server cluster thing, but I personally uh, don't mind, <clears throat> but it should be a lot easier to find groups, in my opinion, even on your server, and it should be automatic. That's what I personally think. If Nowadays, if a game in comes out, an MMO comes out, and it does not have this option, then I'm pretty sure uh, the game will blow. I just just something I this is one of yeah you can quote me on that if you want to <laughs> MMO new MMO if you do not have some sort of looking for group finder let it be server wide let it be across servers or cross servers or something like that you will not succeed anymore because people are expecting that nowadays it is something people are used to I'm used, it's, it's the same, <laughs> I find it funny that people are like, yeah, um, you don't need it for battle group or ground group. And for battle grounds, it was already introduced with Star Wars The Old Republic. You just clicked on, oh, I'm looking for a battle group. Five minutes later, you were with ten other people and fighting against ten other people. It was okay that it was introduced, but why was it not introduced on the fly with PV? Nobody knows. Anyways, what's important nowadays is that you kind of have a reason to keep people on this, to create a, some sort of server community. Like I said, I have, that's something I kind of miss nowadays. I kind of miss knowing people on my server. I, well, then again, I switch servers pretty often. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of missing nowadays. But I, 
Still, uh, I have to drink something. Mm. Okay, back to the gameplay. That were all the community stuff. Let me reset. Stop declaring everything as a World of Warcraft killer. Help newcomers. And if you're a publisher, or if the pub, it would be nice if the publisher acknowledged the people who actually help newcomers. Moderate the forums. Give me a reason to leave World of Warcraft <laughs> or my current MMO that I'm playing and leave behind seven years of, um, well, memories or something, call it like that. And make it easy to find groups. Gameplay. One thing that really bothered me with Star Wars The Old Republic was that it was parts uh, were unplayable. Again, I'm used to World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft, and I can safely say that, has the best controls in any freaking game that I know. You can cast a fireball on this one, on this enemy, you can switch, and as soon as the fireball is shut out, you can cast an instant on the other enemy. You can jump whirl in the, uh, while jumping and shoot at an enemy and then carry on running forward. The game has such a good movement system. And when I was... Pl All the other MMOs that I mentioned at the beginning, in every one, it felt so stiff to play them. It is so horrible to, horrible to play another MMO nowadays after you, I played World of Warcraft. You don't have the same feel. It is. This, I, I don't want. To, like I said, World of Warcraft is not the the pinnacle of gaming, but the controls are really, really good. And uh, I have to compare every game I play with World of Warcraft because that's where I have the most experience. I could compare it to EverQuest. Yeah, EverQuest, where if you accidentally just brushed over the W. Uh, button the game uh, your spell got cancelled but not in between but at the end like oh you moved to uh, break your concentration <laughs> that was really fun <laughs> anyways um make sure the game is playable i people can ignore some sort of bugs that's okay but again, store. I mentioned store because it was my most recent game. The game had some sort of bug with animations. Like, you clicked on a skill, and then your character started doing his animation for that. The cooldown of the skill was already gone, but the animation was still going on for a little bit. And if you clicked on another skill, nothing happened. So you kind of had to wait until your character finished this animation, even though the cooldown was already done. And I was like, what? It felt so unnatural. It felt so bad. And a lot of people complained about that in the forums. I know a lot of people will now say, I never had that problem, blah, blah. Just because you didn't have the problem doesn't mean that other people hadn't it. Hmm? And... That's, that's kind of the main thing. Uh, try to polish as much as possible. And if you can't polish so much, do not include so many things. Like I said, when World of Warcraft came out, it didn't really need the amount of weights that EverQuest had. And if somebody nowadays releases an MMO and people are like, oh, it doesn't have as much weight as World of Warcraft, then punch them in the face. Of course, a new game doesn't have four tiers of um, weight like the most current World of Warcraft expansion. And it doesn't even have uh, five, six uh, weight um, PvP battlegrounds. It doesn't have to. But at least the ones that it have should work. And that was one of another reason. At least I never reached the end game in Star Wars The Old Republic. Because I rage deinstalled this <laughs> this game. And but I heard from a lot of people that instances are still bugged six months after. Um sometimes it was really like rolling a die. Uh, in order if you could defeat a boss or if the boss bugged out and you couldn't defeat it. And yeah, you will not keep people 
interested in your game if you have bugs like that. If a mob is clipping through a wall somewhere, nobody gives a flying fuck about that. But if the wait boss of wait instance A is bugging out and gets unclickable or you can't uh, target him anymore or he suddenly doesn't take any more damage or he doesn't transfer his new face, yeah, that's not good. You should fix that ASAP. And I personally would prefer on a new game one bug free wait zone than three bugged out wait zones. I, I'm perfectly fine with one wait zone, polish it, make it playable, let people run it and a few months later you release the next one. Let people run it, polish it and so on. That's kind of how it worked. In EverQuest it was kind of different. In EverQuest kind of threw you every en uh, every encounter possible at you, but you c since you had to grind gear because there were a lot of gear blocks in the game, you kind of had to grind the gear, and they did have time to polish everything. I'm pretty sure North uh, ta um, Temple of Vision wasn't properly fixed when the game first came out, but since it kind of took people 3-4 months to actually get the gear and levels to be able to wait the Temple of Vision, yeah, they, they kind of had some time to fix that. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> um, another thing people have to realize is make the end game fun. Give people something to do in your end game. Not everyone is interested in waiting. Not everyone is interested in PvE. And that's another thing where World of Warcraft shines. You have you can collect achievements. They copied the achievements from Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings first introduced achievements. And a few months later, World of Warcraft included a better system in their game about achievements. Easier to access, you have, at least from what I've heard, I haven't played the um, Lord of the Rings achievement per thing yet. Uh, you kind of had the codex in Star Wars The Old Republic, but there was nothing like collect 50 pets to gain another pet. There was no explore every part of the galaxy and get a title. There was no... You could collect data quants, that's all I heard. And you kind of needed to have these data quants because they were some p pretty good items later on. I don't know, I have played it that far. But there were like, what, eight data quants? Yeah, that, that's really end game. That's, that, that really keeps people interested for a long time. If you have to collect eight data quants and do some bugged out jumping puzzles to get them. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have... Um, PvP people can cope with a lot of sameness. I mean, look at Team Fortress 2. How many maps are there on Team Fortress 2? I haven't pl really played Team Fortress 2. There are like, what, three, four maps, something like that. I remember one map with the the bomb you have to protect and so it moves forward. And then there's the, I think, one domination map. And is there even a capture the flag mode? I don't know. Um... PvP players are pretty happy with one, two, three, let it be two different way, um, battlegrounds at first. As long as they are fun to play. And I can tell Hutball wasn't fun to play. Because you could exploit the shit out of this game. If you were playing a class that could somehow jump or something, you had such a high advantage in this game. And whoa, this game was whoa, it was horrible to play. Ah, I mean the idea was nice, it was something new, but the execution, whoa, especially with all the lag going on, because you were running over a fire pit and there was no fire inside, and suddenly you dropped that. Well, yeah, too bad. Due to the lag, the fire pit was actually there, but you didn't see it. <laughs> Stuff like that, and. You could dominate people just by two, three people in a one group, one team speak, and you could dominate this thing. And it wasn't, I, in my opinion, it wasn't fun. Um, I think the most well-known um, things are 
wait a second. I think the most well known modes are Capture the Flag and Domination. Yeah, Warzone, Gulch, and the Versi Besser. Uh, another Domination Capture the Flag thing is was Eye of the Storm or World of Warcraft thing. I also liked something like Altavac where you were doing some objectives and stuff like that. But if, if you release a new MMO, just include Capture the Flag and include um, Domination and people will be happy. You can keep people happy for at least one year with just these two. Give them something to work for and oh my god that was I my best friend explained this to me and I, I tried my best to listen to him but I think my brain melted when I heard that. You had to get points in Star Wars to buy some boxes and in these boxes was a random item, a random PvP item, and if you were unlucky, you were always getting pants or something like that. I think you even had to swap currency around, like you got PvP points, you had to swap them around to something else and then buy the boxes where may or may not be another item. No, that's totally horrible. Who had this idea? Oh yes, I played PvP for one week and now I can buy one box and oh well pants again ha 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 too bad no 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 that's not how we do it <laughs> it's horrible nobody wants this one thing <clears throat> you can offer vanity items again people love vanity items it's quite interesting I mean if you I don't know if these people never played another MMO, I don't want to harp on World of Warcraft, but in EverQuest people were doing everything they could to get their epics, even though some for some classes the epics weren't even that good, but they had some, you were like, whoa, he has this epic item, and not many people have it. And... Or World of Warcraft example. In World of Warcraft Burning Crusade there was one faction that sold some sort of um, uh, some overbred uh, G's, something like that, like uh, um, with horns and stuff you can ride on. And you had to kill a lot of uh, ogres for that and turn in their beats for more reputation. And yeah, my best friend was pretty busy with that. She, she was farming these ogres day in, day out. And I think it took like two, three weeks of constant farming to get the job done. And she had quite a lot of time. So uh, a, a casual person, will be in, if he's interested in that, he will be busy for half a year or something. Especially since you're competing with other people. So... You you have you give them these options like here is something to do if you do not feel like raiding if you do not feel like uh, PvP here you can get vanity items like that um, there was another quest where you could get some manta way to ride on a flying manta way and you had to do daily quests for that and you could farm them and some give people something to do you. I, when I, one time I was bored and was farming some firefly mob that dropped a firefly pet. It didn't give me any advantage in the game. But I kind of felt like farming this. It gave me something to do. Reputation farming to, for, to get items. That's something people like doing. Not everyone, but there are people like to just log on to their Swiss two, three dailies, and they get something in return at the end. It's not the high-end equipment, but it gives them something. Something they can be like, okay, I farmed now this little chicken, and now I'm happy. Give people something to do. Another thing, in my opinion, that was horribly solved in um, Star Wars The Old Republic was the crafting system. They introduced a crafting system where you did not have to go out and farm materials. I'm pretty sure some people will be like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> but uh, if you give them no... In I mean, if for basic materials, okay. I may be okay if I never had to farm... Um, what's his face? Copper ore again in World of Warcraft because I want to 
skill up a blacksmith or something. I can I could live with that. But it also gives people another reason not to go out. People are just sitting at the home base or the station in Star Wars and World of Warcraft and nothing is going on. There's nobody out there doing something. Give like I said, let the, the crafting system, the idea itself was okay. The but how they implemented it, in my opinion, was totally horrible. Uh, give people some reason to go out and farm some mobs for some rare items and let them craft actually something useful. That's another thing that I, at least I heard that the crafting things were totally useless. Uh, everyone who was waiting a little bit, hell, everyone who was PV eating a little bit got better items. It wasn't even good to, for twinks because of the level restrictions and so on and stuff like that. So, pff, yeah, totally not good. Um, like I said, a lot of people like this vanity item stuff. That's the main reason why free-to-play games can actually exist because people put down real money in order to uh, get another pet or something. I mean, um, every time they release a new pet in the world of Warcraft shop, they make like $10 million on the first day because uh, 1 million people are buying this thing on the first day. They release a new pet and whoop, 1 million people bought the game. pet. Voila, that's, that's how you make money. <laughs> and, and if you have a subscription-based model, it's kind of nice to actually get these things in-game too. Sure, a lot of these things in World of Warcraft, at least you can't get in game, you have to buy them. And I, I did buy one, not for me, but for a friend of mine, best friend, and she was happy. I was happy because she was happy, but I would never buy, I would never pay 10 bucks for a pet for me. <laughs> but yeah, that's give people something to do. Polish your game. If you can't polish all, then you can remove some things, give people one long wait instance. I, I heard of people who... Star Wars The Old Republic was beaten two weeks after it was released. People leveled, equipped and beat every boss in Star Wars The Old Republic two weeks after release. And that's something that shouldn't be possible. Put in a cock block. A huge cock block. You need the best gear up to this point in order to beat this thing. And then you can enter the next weight tier or something like that. Make it like that. I know it's kind of hard to balance, but hell, you are a freaking game development studio. Oh, you have to do... I have to balance stuff. How horrible. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will disagree with me on that, but... I, I prefer, I can't remember how often I went into Blackwing Lair or AQ-40 and tried to kill these damn um, kings there. And uh, it was horrible. Horrible. Anyways. Um, yeah. Make it easier for people to find groups, even weights. I like the lock for weight option in World of Warcraft. I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, there are people like me nowadays. You also have to remember, at least in World of Warcraft, people grew older. When I was still playing World of Warcraft the first time, I was like, Woo, I'm studying. I have so much free time on my hands. Give me, give me time things. Give me everything. Oh, I, I feel like farming for four hours in order to wait for one hour. That's totally fine with me. Nowadays, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm perfectly fine with the looking for weight option. If I feel like, oh, it's Saturday afternoon, I sit down and uh, do some uh, looking for weight action. That's totally okay. I can live with that. And <laughs> I also laugh at people who say, oh, World of Warcraft turned so much easier. Oh, yes. Um, I can see on your arsenal that you didn't clear out the heroic instances. Well, heroic instances aren't content. What? <laughs> so World of Warcraft is too easy, but you aren't playing the hard modes in order to advance. No, oh, because they are not content. Good. I, I, I'm, 
I'm quite happy that they changed that system. I, it kind of pissed me off that I didn't get to see Keltuzad and uh, when there were still 40 men weights out. And I, it kind of pissed me off that I didn't see Illidan or <laughs> I didn't even step foot into uh, the, the, what was it, Well of Eternity. I never, I, years later, I gather some friends and we just bumwashed the zone because we were 10 levels and stuff over the thing. But I didn't get to see Sunwell and it kind of ticked me off and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I can kind of feel how other people with less time feel playing a game like that. If you if you kind of put out money but you do not see everything. That's why it's kind of okay for me for looking for weight options. So people see Deathwing, they are happy. They can farm some gear, something like that. Anyways, I'm pretty sure people will disagree with me. And I'm open for discussions. You can feel free. You can make response videos to that. Tell me how wrong I am. As long, keep it civil and keep a discussion going. And let me remember, <laughs> remind you of one thing. Discussions aren't about throwing slur words around. So... If you start the discussion with, you fucking imbecile, you have no idea, I am not going to listen to you. Anyways, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will see each other soon. So, take care and goodbye.